hello, good morning. What is it, six? It's just about six o'clock. Today is a Saturday. It's a Saturday job. So, my favorite. I love working Saturdays, so does Carson. Uh, we're gonna go do injector cups on a cat wheel loader 950G. I already pulled the injectors, so they're sitting in the back. Yeah, we went up there a week ago, pulled the injectors out. Um, we went, went to diagnose um, fuel in the coolant. So the, the coolant stunk like almost like varnish or something, you know, like that kind of a off smell. And uh, yeah, we found uh, number six, or yeah, number six injector cup had, uh, had cracked. We got like an hour, almost a two hour drive. We'll see you up there. Ready? Ready? Are we ready? Uh, we just got on site. Um, and that's the machine behind us. Don't look at the back of the cab. There's like jackets and camera gear everywhere and Carson's stuff, I think. I'm pretty sure it's Carson. I, I, it's easier to blame him because he's not here. Oh, look at that. What's that? Mueller. I'm just gonna pull out my laptop because I'm a, I can't work without it. It's gonna tell me exactly how to put the injectors in, right? And everything. Can't work without a computer, remember. Don't know how to wrench without one. This new generation, I tell you. Classic. Classic old timers. My response to that was always like, like oh, he, I show up, you know, at the dealer and I gotta plug the laptop in to get it out of D ring. Like, oh, you got, young guys couldn't work without a computer, eh? Well, yeah, but like, you old guys can't work with a computer. Like, you, I don't know, man, you gotta keep up. It's changing all the time. Just learn how to do it all. Aha! It's just another tool. Well, we'll just use it to get our specs because it's just this is just my manual. The only difference now is we don't have the big paper books to keep in our truck to get soggy, right? Which is what the, a lot of the old timers like to do. Keep their manuals in their back of their cab or something, I guess. And Mueller gave us this. What is it? I don't know. What is it? Is it uh sorry? drawer opener I was thinking of using them with my my pressure test gauges and stuff right hanging them on there because I got those little uh, those little reusable zip tie wraps so you can stick them on somewhere on the side of a cab instead of having them looped over with by the hose you can zip them to the something like that maybe I don't know we just got them we're we're trying them out we're product test your pail underneath to catch the dirt. Uh, let's see. I got three, four buckets here. So I'm gonna drain our coolant. Maybe drain, refill, run it up, drain it again. Just get rid of all the fuel in the system if we can. And we're gonna actually recommend they do it maybe one more time after operating for a while. The different colors. You want to know why some are red and some are yellow and some are green? Cherry, lime, and lemon. And you just pick your flavor. I think cats usually prefer cherry coolant. So, so for this machine, we'll drain and then put the cups in, refill it, uh, run it up hot. We'll see our condition because we didn't get a lot of fuel in it, but we'll probably still run a bilge clean flush on it. The only thing is, I couldn't get. I couldn't get bilge cleaner, they were sold out, I don't know. Yeah, that kind of brings up a funny point too. Like lately, just with like trying to get stuff, like the last year or so, two years, everybody knows, like supply issues has been a big thing. It's really changed the way a lot of us have been coming into repairs and stuff. Like you can't just throw parts at things anymore when there's no parts available. Not that we want to do that anyways, but it's really made you have to do some thinking outside the box, some more ingenuity, you know, and. If you can't shake it, then you know you you might not uh, you might not make it. Huh. Wow, that rhymes. We'll just let this box. It's just gonna drain like that for a little while. So 
Can you see in there? Can you see where the tip of my pick is going? Right where the tip of my pick is. Pull it out there. There's actually a crack. I'll move the light. Maybe you can see that little dark spot. I'm gonna take that off, let that cavity drain back. It's not a bad idea to uh, change any O-rings on the inside here. Well, really on anything that you start disturbing, especially on this high pressure oil stuff. If these plugs leak because you didn't change the O-ring, your high pressure oil pump will be leaking off out of these plugs, right? I buy this tool set. Um, it's not the OEM one, but it's a very good manufacturer of like an OEM style tool. So it comes with rubber plugs, six of them. It comes with the install tool for the sleeves to drive the sleeves in properly. So you don't mess those up or nick them. It comes with the removal tools, a tap, and I bought a couple brushes and stuff just to clean the bores out. Um, so I'll show you how we use this. It's pretty, pretty basic, pretty straightforward, but this plug goes in you drop that plug in there and you push it down and that just ensures that we don't get any of the shavings or contamination in the bore when we're tapping uh, all right uh, so they say now my next thing is i'm not sure if this thing will tap all the way i haven't used this tool set before it's my first time so learn along with me now they say to to plug it, but I may have to leave the plug out and use a vacuum at the same time instead. Uh, I'll just disassemble this. These are guide bushings. These guide bushings are for the tap. Um, I bought this tool specifically because it had really, really good reviews. the right guide bushing so we put our guide bushing on our tap and we drop our tap and that just makes sure the tap goes in into the bore straight and not crooked we got our rubber plug in and lots of tap juice like I mean lots you don't want this tap binding up so can feel it cutting, which is good. And then take a break, back her out a bit, cut again. Let's just pop it out and see what our see our progress here. I don't know if we've cut too much, but uh, you can see that rubber plug doing its job. You can kind of see where the shavings are in there. Lots of tap sauce on a big tap like this. You don't want this thing sticking and binding up and, and breaking off inside or, or not. You know what, this tap's pretty big. I don't think it would just, it might snap. It could snap, don't go crazy. That's why I'm using a smaller ratchet, a 3H drive. But uh, still, you just be very ginger with this kind of stuff and take your time. Do it uh, one step at a time. Making things you don't want to damage anything on the head side. Just, yeah. And like, this is why, you know, you advocate the proper tooling sometimes, you know, like, um, I did see guys in the past use like bolts and like, um, you know, like blind pullers and stuff. Like those will work sometimes, but this one is nice. It actually threads the, the, uh, the sleeve for you and then because it's threading it, it's a nice positive grip on the uh, on the cup. That's just a bearing to keep the resistance down on like the, the, the puller, the threads, you know what I mean? Just kind of put it together, we'll go like this. And now this part threads into the cup that we just tapped, right? So we thread that in. Once that's in, we'll use this as a forcing screw. It'll pull as we thread this down. It'll pull the, the uh, sleeve out in theory. We'll see. We'll see how well these work. As, like I said, this is my first time using this tool. 
Um, <clears throat> but a lot of these engine tools are, are like I said before, a lot of them are worth their weight, just you know, saving you hassle and and whatnot. So I'll just go grab a couple of wrenches for that. It was, we'll turn that into the sleeve as much as we can. Bottom it out. We'll start pulling this out. We don't need to turn this anymore, but it's not a bad idea to kind of hold it and keep it from from spinning if it starts to spin and want to back out of the sleeve. But yeah, you see the bearings, the bearing below turning too. That's why we put that there, there so you don't have that increased kind of resistance of the the surface resistance of the nut against the pulling tool. You've got a nice bearing there to kind of reduce the friction. Back out a bit, just double check. Feels like it's coming out. Just be careful not to like smack it around and drop any of those shavings down in your cylinder. So now you can see the sleeves loose, so we'll just very, very gingerly. Oh, you can hear the coolant that we've got. We didn't pull the rad cap, so as soon as we pulled that, we got the little vacuum of coolant. Head's already empty. And there we go. Cup removed. That's so that's without the sleeve. So now that's where the coolant, you can see the little cavity where the coolant sits. And that sits around that sleeve. Alright. Pretty sweet. Pretty skulkum. Skulkum is. Look at that. And our plug, a rubber plug, keeps all those shavings inside. Yeah. Not in our engine. <laughs> Unless you like guaranteeing work for yourself, you might not get paid for that work though. Yeah, technically you could probably figure this out with a tap and a puller setup. It was just a, what is this, a 11 or a, what is it, a 1 11 and a half NPT. What is that? Yeah, it's a 1 inch NPT. The 1 inch NPT tap. Nothing too crazy. But all this stuff, I mean, you could probably engineer something yourself or whatever. For me, it's not worth my time to sit in the shop for a couple hours and start fabricating all that special tooling when, you know, I think I bought all this tooling set up for 600 bucks. I mean, did all this. When you're doing this, that's not bad to spend on a purpose-built special tool. Because of what we're doing, like you can buy this tool with two different versions of the tap. You can buy a offshore branded tap, you know, you know what I mean? Um, or you can buy a nice USA made tap. And yeah, it's about, I think it was almost a hundred bucks more for the USA version. Uh, this is just kind of going back to the right tool and saving time for yourself. hundred bucks, is it worth it if you risk having a, like, you know, you saved a hundred bucks, but now you risk chipping these teeth off and maybe your tap only lasts a couple of cups, right? Maybe it lasts one job, maybe this one lasts five jobs in comparison. To me, that's worth that extra hundred bucks. If that cheap tap breaks alone, that that alone, it's gonna cost me an hour or two or whatever to extract it, right? Without messing up anything on the engine. Buy once, cry once, that kind of thing. Spend the money on the right tools if you can, you know? Like we talked about, you can make it yourself, but maybe there's certain parts of fabricating your own tooling that are worth uh, spending the money on and buying good quality components, that kind of thing. Don't, don't be too cheap. I mean, there's some stuff I have that is cheap and it works for that situation. Anything integral like this, like important stuff, then spend the money on it. Don't mess around. Quick tip, just a tip, just for you. Back to it. Mwah. Mwah. Yeah, so that's the gist of it. Um, we're gonna clean the bores out. We'll show you a little bit on cleaning them, but it's not really exciting. <laughs> But that's why we bought these brushes. So I got this style. That'll go in and kind of clean the sides up. This will clean the bottom. And we got to make sure there's like no carbon on these, like real clean. Because, uh, excuse me, it's a metal to metal face seal on these. You see how there's no seal on the bottom of the cup? It seals in the bottom of the head. And it's a metal seal. So there's no, uh, there's no copper washer on these ones as well so that is something to keep in mind doing a 3126 if it's a b or not 
Sometimes they have a copper washer. This is a, kind of a rule of thumb for a lot of injectors. Sometimes they have a copper washer. Watch for that. Make sure there's no copper washer in the bottom. Make sure you're not doubling up the copper washer. If it's stuck in there and you put a new one on, make sure it's supposed to have one. If it doesn't, put one on. Just make sure you know what uh, what's required on that engine, right? You know, you can't Mickey Mouse this stuff. So make sure you're doing it right or don't do it at all. Call a professional. Call us. There's a little number here. Um, yeah, as clean as you can. No chunkies. Because those injector tips, if you saw how fine the orifices are, I'll show you. We'll actually go down to the bench now and you can take a look at that quick. I'll show one on the bench and you can see what I mean. So the tip nut, this is like the fuel chamber, so we had corrosion all around here on the old injectors. I'll just, I'll just take this off for a second. I don't like taking these off until we're ready to put them in. I don't, I don't even like really unwrapping these until we're gonna put them in, but for you guys, we'll do it. Can you zoom in on that and see how small the holes are? See how tiny the holes are? That's just for you guys. Exclusive behind the scenes sneak peek at the hole, the tip, the hole tip, just for you. You guys got hemostats in your toolbox? If you don't, you should get some. Like, doctor tools. I don't know, they're just really handy for like grabbing like something that falls in, breaks off, you can't quite get in there. You can clamp it and squeeze it, leave it, and then just pull this out with like your magnet or your fingers if you can reach, but these are really handy tools. You know, keep a couple on your truck. Anyway, back to pulling cups. Let's pull some more cups, baby. This thing has been like one of my favorite things I bought lately. Battery powered vacuum. They have a pack out version, but it's way bigger. And this older version, it's a little, little less power, but it's a lot smaller. And it doesn't work right now. What the? F Let's see if we got a good battery on there first. There we go. Fixed it. How do you give it a hit? And your ears, that's loud, eh? I should put my ear defenders on. Compressed air is really bad for your ears, eh? I don't know if you guys know that. Like the, the decibel, that compressed air, that that is the same frequency or hertz or whatever <clears throat> as a woman talking. So if your wife is saying, hey, why can't you hear me when I'm talking? Well, I'm deaf at that frequency because of all the compressed air. So like. It's legit, I can't hear you because of that reason. You think I'm making this up? I love women. I love my wife. Thanks for letting me work Saturday. Yeah, we'll just go along systematically one by one on to the next. I'm gonna do the same thing to all six holes. Uh, then we'll give it another sucky, suck job, blow job whatever um make sure they're nice and dry all nice and dry no oily residue no fuel because we lock tight these in actually we grease them and lock tight them but we got to make sure that's all dry down there so the uh so the cups have a nice sealing surface on the sides and the injector has that nice sealing surface on the bottom face that we're we're cleaning up so just carefully go along don't rush this step just take your time with each hole all right, take your time. Yeah, we'll call you back in a few minutes here when I'm done. We'll see you later. A few inches later. I'm gonna install some cups now, or sleeves. I always was told to put Loctite on these. I tried to, I just tried to actually confirm that in the procedure, but I didn't see it in SIS actually installing these sleeves. I don't know, let me know if I'm wrong. I'd like to know if there's a better way. I just do like a real light application of it there. I don't know if it's, I'll be honest, like I said, I don't know if that's the right way. It's just always what I was taught by guys, a lot of old school cat guys too. So maybe they know something that the OEM doesn't know. I don't know. Let's give her a tap. 
just a fancy driver for topping them in, but it just makes sure that it drives in nice and even and there's there's no nicks or anything from like a, you know, if you use a punch and you're hitting a little harder on some surfaces with a punch, right? You can't hit nice and even. You can hear the tone change. And we'll be back in a little bit. Be back when we start putting the injectors in, okay? First injector. These O-rings are, are lubed with like the test fluid that they use. So we'll uh, put a little thick on there. It was also recommended to use Vaseline on these as well. You can get away with that. It's a lot cheaper than this stuff. Um, and it's petroleum based too, so you know it'll be okay. Watch out for those little connectors. These are these break easy. Um, I haven't broke one yet, but there's a first time for everything. Take your cap off and go straight in. Don't take that cap off until you're putting the injector in. Right. Oh, and make sure your connector is not going to get not, not going to get hung up too. All right. Now we take a punch. We take our hammer, and we give them a whack. Right? Whack the solenoid. And we'll smash it in on top. Just kidding. Don't do that. <clears throat> it's a bit of a <clears throat> to get them started. But that's going down. Make sure you're putting your oil deflector on the, the right direction. Six Newton meters. Yeah. There we go. Is it 12 on the deflector side? Cool. All right. Injectors are in, connectors are on. We'll just give her one more wipe. If you wanted to, you could do an overhead like valve adjust if you want. These ones are leaving it, just gonna get it together and run it up at this point. Kinda time is of the essence. Usually they have trim codes. These ones don't have trim codes on the top. They're remand injectors. I don't know why. They probably haven't been like they're not they're not OEM cat remands because those are are, a, are still a spendy unit for a remand injector. They are um, probably just not through CAT's test system, so they, I guess they have no way of actually matching all the trim codes. All the trim file does, it, well, it's kind of, it's kind of explains it in the name, but it trims the, uh, the amount of fuel delivery. It, it, uh, it adjusts the fuel delivery to each injector on a very fine level according to how much how that injector is calibrated at the factory, right? So some injectors may naturally just flow a little higher than others because the way they, you know, the buildup of tolerance is in the parts on that injector. So we have trim codes to prevent any kind of uh, kind of major variance in there. It's not, it's not integral to running the machine. It's not like it's not gonna run without trim codes. The only side effects you might see is a little, you know, at the at the worst, if you got the biggest difference in trim codes, like say this one would spec a trim code on this end of the spectrum, but it's actually this still in the computer on the opposite end. Worst case is it's going to smoke a little bit and you might not be as efficient as far as power delivery goes and everything. But the, uh, it's, 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 it's such a small value. It's pretty minute. Hey, valve cover's on. I'm gonna start tying up the wiring harness again while I got more access here. And uh, then we'll put the intake back on, like the air cleaner back on, the intake tube, a charge air tube. Uh, then we just fill it with coolant. We'll recheck our engine oil level. Um, we'll do an initial fire up here and then we'll, uh, maybe we'll just run it up quick and then drain the engine oil and like, well, so we can get it warm and then drain the engine oil. And then, then the engine oil will start going up through the top end, flushing any 
whatever contamination that we might have gotten the top here out. Um, and we tried, tried pretty hard to keep it as clean as we can, but it's the field. What do you do? Um, yeah, so we'll do that. Uh, zip tie everything nice and off to the side here too. Didn't even lube it up or anything, I just slipped her in. There is a lot of fuel at the top, it floats to the top. And uh, when I drain it, it kind of just sits and starts sticking to the reservoir tank and everything, the overflow tank. So we're gonna just try to rinse a bunch of that out just by filling this and letting it kind of wash out for now. Just to, so just, this is the old coolant, you know, so I kind of strained out what I could from the old stuff. It looks decent, we're just using it as a, literally as just a, flush through the system. It's not even sitting in the machine, it's just going straight through to help wash out all the in the tank, rinse it out, so. Like I had another pail like that, and I kind of just strained it and wiped like with a Zorbi the oil off the top after it was sitting. And then I just used a, a bit of that to flush down all the And the coolant that was in here looked decent. I mean, that's still shit. But it looked like that, now it's like, like just black on top there all that fuel that uh got washed out fuel and oil whatever is in there so yeah pretty nasty eh i better double check that my pet cock is closed yeah it's closed yeah look at that she's thirsty oh uh, we're gonna fire it up when you're running it check your engine oil level check your coolant level you know we're just checking all our fluids making sure none of them move so yeah 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 i'm gonna check our actuation pressure just before we get too far ahead of ourselves Oh, she's like nice and clean now, eh? Yeah. I mean, that's what we want. That's kind of the goal, to have it run better, right? <laughs> All right, let's tidy up and we'll go for a spin. Hi, Lane. Thanks for the, uh, thanks for the pictures. Where's he from? Texas. Oh, Texas, cool. Maybe, uh, maybe we'll meet you down there. Shoot some rattlesnakes or something. Something, something Texan like that. Yeah, thanks for the dirty photos. Send us more pictures, man. Like everybody, if you've already sent them once, send them again. Maybe you'll have a better shot this time at getting on. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the submissions. Quick shout out to Garth at Arc Asphalt Recycling. Uh, thanks for letting us work with you. Yeah, thanks for letting us kind of showcase a job and uh, and show people that might not have any idea what we do. We've done a few jobs with Garth now. This is the first one we've gotten on camera. We've talked to him. We've talked to him ahead of time, and he was cool with it. All right, job is done. See you guys later. Bye.